Welcome back friends, Robert Mead, The Power of Imagination. Today, we're gonna to be covering chapters eight and nine, the highlights of how we can actually go into our future and prepare what it'll look like and predetermine it and then have it manifest in our life. We're also gonna be taking a close look at how it is so true how what you focus on expands. How can we give our attention only to what we want and bring that into our world? Follow me, we'll see today, it starts now. Chapter eight, from the power of awareness, I hope you've been following. If not, I'll leave a link to my previous videos. I want you to watch the last four in this series about the power of awareness. For me, it's the key book from Master Mystic Neville Goddard. If you're not familiar with him and you're interested in the law of assumption, how to manifest what you want in your life, encourage you to read the book. It's absolutely amazing. Again, if you've missed them, go back and view the first few chapters of this book. We're now in chapter eight. Chapter eight is actually entitled renunciation. Now, renunciation is a word you might not use too frequently. To renounce something is to reject it, right? So we have a choice in life of what we want to focus on. We can accept it, or we can reject it. And we can also choose what we wish to focus on because as we know, what we focus on expands. If you have something in your life that's irritating you and bothering you, the more you think about it, the more you're gonna get of that problem, of that situation. I love the way Neville worded it in the book. He gives a quote from a, a lovely poem which says, there is no coal of characters so dead that it will not glow and flame, but if slightly turned. Resist not evil. So, whether it's good or bad, good or evil, something you want to happen in your life or something you don't want to have see in your life, it's kind of like even when you're in a barbecue or if you have a fire out by the beach or if you go camping and you have a uh, fire, right? You notice the wood burns down to coals, or if you're in a having a barbecue, the coals burn down, and if you just fan them a little bit, shake them a little bit, they seem to pop back to life. Well, that's exactly what happens with what we uh, focus on. We either renounce it by not giving it our attention, right, rejecting it, or we focus on it and bring it to life, we keep it alive. What you give your energy to, right, you get more of. And that has 100% to do psychologically as the truth. More from chapter eight from the power of awareness is the idea again of what you give your attention to, you continue to make real. Do you believe that? Reflect back on your life, right? When you told yourself that Today is going to be a terrible day. Today is going to be a rough day. I know my boss is going to be mad at me today. I know my wife's going to give me a hard time. I know my partner, my husband's going to give me a hard time. Whatever it is, my children, they always do that. You are actually predestined to get more of that experience. Did you know that? It's absolutely true. Haven't you experienced that in your life? On the other hand, as they say, getting up on the right side of the bed, you can purposely get up on the right side of the bed by the way you start your morning, right? Absolutely positive, focused on imagining that your day is gonna turn out amazing, and so it does. What you give attention to expands. So if that's the case, why not choose to give your attention to what you want to see in your life? What you want to expand in your life. Give attention to that and renounce or reject all that you do not want to see, all that you don't want to think about. So Neville gives uh, also a great illustration here from another very poetic language. And he uses a lot of deep poetic language. 
He talks about giving beauty for ashes, right? When you concentrate your attention on things as you would like them to be, on rather than things that you don't want to see them be, you are giving beauty for what appears to be ashes, all right? You're bringing to life the coal of character that you want to, want to have in your life or the experience that you want to have. Also, the thought of give joy for mourning. Well, by maintaining a joyous attitude, a positive attitude, regardless of unfavorable circumstances, you're giving joy for circumstances that may cause mourning. Also, you give praise for the spirit of heaviness, right? So instead of having this spirit of heaviness, of forlorn, of another day, another day of the same old, same old, and I know what I'm going to face at work. I know what I'm going to face with uh, the upcoming difficulties, with the economy, with my lack of, uh, of money that I'm making. Whatever the case is, the more you think about that, you're going to continue to perpetuate it. It's a simple law of the universe. When you maintain a confident attitude, instead of the, uh, uh, coming to despondency, right, you are giving praise instead of despondency for, in your life. So he goes on to say that you become a tree of righteousness. So what happens is when the above mental states, right, are permanent part of your consciousness, you're planting all these good things in your life, right? So it really needs to become a permanent way of thinking. It's not just about being optimistic. It's about knowing that you know that you know. I get up in the morning. I know I'm going to have a great day. I'm going to feel great. I'm going to meet great people. I'm going to have success, for example, if I'm employed and on a job. Okay. If in my case, when I contact a client, I'm going to get positive feedback from them and I'm going to be giving them what they need in order to accelerate their lives. As an imagination coach, I meet people from all walks of life. I've had, again, clients in over 45 countries. But you know what? Most of their problems boil down to just a few. Relationships, health, right, and finances. Those are king. <laughs> Doesn't matter what form of money you're using. For example, pesos here in the Philippines, also pesos in Mexico, right? Whether it's the American dollar, whether it's lira, whether it's yen, whatever form of money you're using, that always comes down to one of the big, big uh, challenges that people have. So they either remain in poverty by their thinking or they raise themselves out of that by their thinking. There's so much good here. I want to encourage you to read chapter 8 because really it helps us understand that we can actually... Uh, prune the vines of the clusters that are not producing. So what do I mean by that? Well, Neville gives the illustration here. Uh, if you have a bush, perhaps a fruit bush, right, or tree, and it's not producing, by cutting off the bad branches, the ugly clusters that are not producing, what then happens, right? You get fresh sprigs, fresh sprouts, and you get eventually fresh fruit. So you actually cut away what you don't want in your life from your tree, all right, by pruning it. You prune it by always focusing only on what you want and eliminating the negative out of your mind first, out of your thinking first. Now, your current challenges and problems may be very, very real. I'm not saying that they're not. But how do you eliminate them? You start by not, no longer focusing on them and rather only focusing on what you want to see happen in your life. Chapter 9 is entitled Preparing Your Place. I absolutely love this because it's based on a, an actually a, a scripture uh, from the Bible. And the way it's worded is, is so, so powerful. Now, again, this is illustrated from the Bible. You don't have to be religious 
right, for this to work for you. But the idea is the principle involved. Notice this. He says, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be there also. And now I've told you before it has come to pass that when it is come to pass, you might believe. So that's flowery language. What does it all mean? Going to prepare a place for you, he says, I. Well, we know that we are I am, right? We are the creators in our life through our own consciousness, right? What we're conscious and aware of as happening in our lives. So you as your I am, you go to prepare that place for you. How do you go prepare that, prepare that place for you? The way you do it is that you imagine what you want to see in your life. See, the first part of, the, of this actually says, in my father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you. So what does he mean by mansions? The mansions are what you desire. It's the state of mind you want to choose to be in. Okay? So the state of mind, the reality that you want to actually have physically happen in your life, starts with your state of mind. That state or condition of success results because you have prepared it ahead of time. Neville actually refers this to this as precognition. To be precognitive of something is to predict it ahead of time, right? Precognition, again, is foreknowledge of an event. So you have foreknowledge of, an, of this event because you predict it ahead of time. You've seen the great job you're going to have. You've envisioned and seen the beautiful relationship you're going to have. You've already envisioned and imagined that great relationship with your children, with your teenagers, with your partner. Okay? You've already seen the results. In my case, I prepared my place here in the Philippines by imagining myself living on the beach, my feet in the sand, the ocean in front of me, the mountains to the back, cool breezes, warm ocean, warm people, great food, great experiences, travel, marvelous experiences. I imagined that ahead of time, before it happened. So I went into my future and prepared it. And then Neville calls this the bridges of incident. So you will follow events or links or bridges. So it's like preparing your, your, uh, your place on the other side of the river. Right? It's there on the other side of the river, but you can't get to it. How do you get to it? You get to it by preparing the bridges, right? Deciding ahead of time what it will look like and what it will be like when you're there, then the bridges, bridges appear. What are those bridges? Things begin to physically happen in your life and develop that lead you to the events, lead you through a series of events, right? So, for example, in my case in traveling, I was able to get my visa. I was able to, uh, the money came, I had the money for traveling, right? I prepared ahead of time, not only mentally, mentally, but physically. I was ready to travel. I was there. Okay? So I became that in my life ahead of time. And then the events unfolded, or as Neville calls them, bridges, that led to receiving that experience. So when you've been there in imagination, Neville says, you will be there in the flesh also. Again, just to reiterate, you can prepare your place ahead of time. How? Through your imagination, through imagining it true first, imagining what it'll be like, what it'll feel like, your experience as already yours. By focusing on what you want, it expands. If you focus on what you want to see developing in your life and renounce and do not give attention to what you do not want, what are you left with? You're only left with that successful path full of bridges that lead you to that ultimate success that you seek. I look forward to speaking to you more from the upcoming chapters. 
This has been Robert Mead, The Power of Imagination. And I thank you and will look forward to talking to you again real soon. Be sure and subscribe. And I'll see you again very soon.